Hi everyone, this is image 7 for the summer interpretation seminar course for D3 students at the University of Minnesota. We'll use one maxillary lateral incisor radiograph to review the concept of dense invaginatus, also known as dense indente. On this lateral incisor radiograph, we see a one tooth smaller than usual with a dense indente. We have a wide pulp canal followed by a large oval radiolucent defect around the apex of this tooth. It appears that the central incisor and the canine are separated by this lesion. The superior border of the lesion is at the floor of the nasal fossa. So what we have seen on this radiograph is a tooth with a radio opacity in the crown, a widened pulp canal, and a circular radiolucent defect. Most likely this tooth is exposed and the oval corticated radiolucent defect is likely to be a radicular cyst. So what are the features of a dense indente on a radiograph? We see invagination of a layer of enamel and dentin into the pulp canal. Clinically, this invagination is either not seen at all or as a prominent pit at the cingulum. There are a wide variation in the size and depth of the invagination. So with that depth, we can classify dense indente or dense invaginatus into three different types. If the invagination is limited to the crown, we'll classify this as type 1. If the invagination is below the level of the CEG, this will be type 2. And if the invagination is deep into the root, it will be classified as type 3. So the prevalence of dense indente is mostly it's in the maxillary lateral incisor. That's about 95%. If you see one tooth with a dense indente, most likely you will see another on the contralateral side. Also, you may see this on central incisors, premolars, and canines. A dense indente is rare in the posterior teeth and also rare in the mandibular arch. So what are the clinical concerns for a dense indente? The space that we have is an easy area for entrapment of food debris and bacteria. With that, we may have caries, pulp exposure, and periapical pathology. In our radiograph, we saw a large cystic lesion around the apex of the lateral incisor. So how do we manage a tooth with a dense indente or dense invaginatus? It's simple. We start with a prophylactic restoration, and that should be enough. If the tooth is exposed, then an endodontic procedure is needed. Let me share with you a CBCT scan to show you the depth of the dense indente. So here is a maxillary arch of a patient in mixed dentition. Let's review the number of the teeth. This is the canine, permanent lateral incisor permanent central incisor, we have a supernumerary tooth, permanent central incisor, and we have a supernumerary tooth. This is the lateral incisor, and that's the canine. And then we have other teeth, which is the normal dentition. This blue line represents the slice here. So this is the permanent central incisor crown, and this is the supernumerary central or supernumerary lateral incisor. And here you can appreciate the dense invaginatus. This is the normal shape of the central incisor. And here we have a deep invagination into the crown. So this is a type 1 dense invaginatus. Here again we have a prominent invagination. This is the permanent central incisor and that's the supernumerary tooth. This is the palatal cortical plate and here is the labial cortical plate, and this is the upper lip. Looking at the axial slice here, and you can appreciate the location of the dense indente. 
So this is the extra tooth, supernumerary tooth, and this is the dense indenti, and here is uh, the main branch of the pulp canal.